One of the questions I get asked the most from new to Linux users is, Hey DT, if you had to choose a full desktop environment to use, which one would you choose? And this is a little weird for me because I've never used full desktop environments. You know, I've never been, I've always been a standalone window manager user. Even when I switched to Linux on the desktop back in 2008, I always gravitated toward using standalone window managers and making my own desktop environment, you know, picking different components and putting it all together. So I've never been a GNOME user, a Plasma user, XFCE user, anything like that. But of course, I have tried them out by installing various distributions to play with and virtual machines and on friends and family computers, right? I've installed Linux dozens of times on other people's machines. And I will say that the desktop environment that fit my workflow the most, the one that I really enjoyed using, like I could see myself happily living in this desktop environment forever, was the old Ubuntu Unity desktop environment. It really made sense to me. And I was kind of sad when Canonical and Ubuntu dropped the Unity desktop environment, but just because they quit using it, and it's all free and open source software, people can still keep developing that. And that's exactly what's going on. There's actually a 12 year old kid that has kept this thing alive and keeps getting updates. And not only is he working on Unity, this kid makes his own Ubuntu flavor called Ubuntu Unity. And they had a recent release, Ubuntu Unity 2204. And that's what I'm going to take a look at today. So let me switch over to my desktop here and I've spun up a virtual machine here to try out Ubuntu Unity. I'm going to run through a quick installation here so I'm just going to go ahead and boot into the live environment. I really like the artwork, the logo and everything. I think that's very slick. And the live environment finally loaded up. It took about two minutes to get into the live environment. Of course, booting directly off the of ISO is always slow, you know, much slower than actually uh, running a properly installed Linux distribution, but that took longer really than I would have expected. Let me go ahead and change the screen resolution here to 1920 by 1080. Keep this configuration, although it's not going to remember it when I reboot because again, this is the live environment. But let's go ahead and run through a quick installation. And did I not click the installer? I've been waiting for about 20 seconds, 30 seconds maybe. Yeah, okay, the installer finally launches. Yeah, everything's a little slow here. Now this could be a virtual machine issue here. I'm using the Vert IO video driver and it could be that it doesn't like that particular driver. Maybe I should have tried a QXML or one of the other video drivers available here in Vert Manager. But let me go ahead and run through the installation. Uh, English is my language, so all I need to do is click continue here. English US is the keyboard layout I want, so I'll click continue. Do I want to do the normal installation or the minimal installation? I typically just do the normal installations uh, for these uh, first look, first impression videos. I, I just want to see everything that is installed normally. Download updates while Ubuntu is installing. Yes, that'll save us some time. We don't have to update later. And then install third party software for graphics, Wi-Fi drivers, yada, yada, yada. You always want to tick that on. That gives you especially your multimedia codecs, which you will need for a proper desktop experience. And now let's go ahead and click continue. Then what do we want to do with the disk? Do we want to erase the whole disk and give the whole disk to Ubuntu Unity? Or do we want to do some partitioning? You know, click something else and then ma manually partition our drives. Uh, I only have one virtual hard drive in this virtual machine and Ubuntu Unity can have the whole thing. So I'm going to choose the first option, erase disk and install Ubuntu. Then click install now. We get a summary of the changes that are going to be made to the disk. Everything looks good. I'm going to click continue. We need to choose our time zone. It has correctly chosen the central time zone in the U.S. for me. It's chosen Chicago as the city, even though I'm not in Chicago. That is in the central time zone for me, so I'll just leave that as is. Then let's create our username and password. My username is going to be DT. Uh, the host name for the computer can be uh, DT slash Unity. And then let's choose a password for the DT user. A strong and complicated password. And then do we want to log in automatically? No, I want to have to enter a password to get into my computer. So I'll leave that ticked off. Require my password to log in as ticked on by default. Leave that. And then use Active Directory. I don't use Active Directory, so I'm just going to click Continue. And now we'll get a little slideshow. This portion of the installation usually takes about 5 to 10 minutes on my machine. So I'll be back once the installation has completed. And the installation has completed. That took about 10 minutes. And now to actually complete the installation, restart. That's what I'm going to do right now. 
All right, yeah, and it launched the Unity desktop in just a couple of seconds. That time's much faster now that we, we've actually got it properly installed. Of course, the live environment, you know, was quite sluggish. Now, the first thing I'm going to do before doing anything else is go and change the display resolution once again to 1920 by 1080. Hit apply. It's going to want to know if we want to keep this configuration. Yes. And now every time I come back to this virtual machine, it will remember that every time I log into Unity, it should be 1920 by 1080. So first impressions, this is a really beautiful desktop. I've always thought Unity was a rather attractive, a rather gorgeous desktop environment to begin with. I, I like the panel on the side. I like the icons. Well, these are standard icons, but I like the uh, Ubuntu Unity logo icon. That's really nice. And what is that that's the software center I don't I don't believe I've ever seen that particular icon I'll check and see what icons that they're using in just a second and of course we have our uh, jammy jellyfish wallpaper as well I don't know if this was created by the Ubuntu unity team specifically for this distribution or if it's part of the wallpaper pack that ships with the flagship Ubuntu now it says software updates are ready to install now this was released April 21st and I'm taking a look at this on May 5th. So, I mean, that's two weeks worth of updates. I'm going to go ahead and take the update. And if I click OK, by default, it's going to launch the software center and it's going to tell me everything that could be updated. And of course, Firefox has an update. You would expect your web browser to be updated often for security reasons. And I believe they are using the snap version of Firefox. I'll take a look at that in just a second just to verify. But I'm going to go ahead and do update all and give it our strong and complicated sudo password and you can see it is updating Firefox you get a progress bar here that's a rather nice touch and you get an overall progress bar here on this button here and they definitely have snaps on the system I mentioned Firefox was probably a snap I was gonna verify that but they have the snap store installed so uh, they definitely have snaps enabled by default I notice we have these application updates which are updating right now but then we also have requires restart OS updates the screenshot tool shot will I don't know why the screenshot tool and shot will require uh, rebooting after the update but let's go ahead and although I don't know if it actually updated anything or maybe it's going to update during the reboot process no it just takes us right back to the login manager so I don't think it actually updated uh, those programs that it said it would update let me launch the software center again and I've been waiting for about 15 20 seconds it says it's loading updates so I'm assuming it's maybe doing a sync of the repositories or something but it's taking a little bit of time here this is one of what I consider the disadvantages sometimes of using these graphical applications where if I was doing an update at the terminal you know the terminal would actually give me some information about what's going on because right now I don't know if it's still actually running an update or if this program has crashed or you know <laughs> what's really going on but I usually don't use the graphical software center and I, I figured I would actually use it this time just to change things up on the video all right so it finally yeah that took like a minute whatever it was doing but yeah I still have these updates maybe I have to do them one at a time if I click on OS updates okay yeah then I get a whole like little sub menu of all the various things that need to be updated a lot of libraries so how do I actually update them I thought restart and update would have taken care of them but and there's in this little pop-up window there's nothing to do here unless I click on them one at a time but no there's nothing to do even for that yeah I'm just not sure how to use this this is actually confusing it would be simpler to do this at the terminal I think so let me do control alt T to bring up a terminal that's how you bring up a terminal in Ubuntu and Ubuntu based distributions and then let me zoom in here and let's just do a sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade and you see the following packages will be updated base files and the various libraries that we saw in that pop-up window but I didn't really have a way to update them at least I, I didn't see in the GUI but at the terminal, you know, it's a simple yes or no question. Do you want to update them? And they get updated. All right, so we have all of those installed and updated. Now, let me run a snap list just to verify that snaps are installed and that we have a few already installed on the system. 
resize this window and it looks like yeah we have firefox as a snap so and the snap store and then you know various other core snap stuff but really the only snap that's installed is firefox is installed as a snap pack now let me do an apt space list space dash dash installed and get a list of all the packages that are installed through the apt package manager uh, line by line each package is on its individual line which makes it rather easy to get a count because then all you have to do is take that same command pipe it into wc the word count program space dash l for i want a line count so there were 1840 lines in this output here which means there were 1840 packages installed via the apt package manager for those wondering about the kernel, let's do a uname dash r. It's using the same kernel, I believe, that the, all the other Ubuntu flavors are using 5.15.0. Now, for those of you wondering about Flatpak support, if I do a where is Flatpak, because if something is installed on the system, a where is command will tell you where the binary is, where the libraries are, where the man page is. So where is Flatpak? Flatpak is installed because we have a binary, user bin Flatpak. And then we have the man page and user share man, yada, yada, yada. So Flatpak is installed. Are there actually any Flatpaks installed, like individual Flatpaks? Let's do a Flatpak list. There are not. So Flatpak is installed. It's ready to go, but none are installed out of the box for you, but it is available. I wonder if that's integrated in the software center. If I go into the software center and let's see, go to this hamburger menu, software repositories. And it took about 10, 15 seconds for that window to come up. Software repositories. Uh, let's see. Other software. No, that's not yet. Updates. Authentication. Additional drivers. This is where you would get your proprietary uh, video drivers, Wi-Fi drivers, things like that. And where is... So Flatpak is installed, but I guess they haven't actually added a Flat Hub as a repository. Yeah, I, I thought I would see uh, some kind of checkbox or something for the FlatHub repository. Let me just close this window and let me just search for something I know is available uh, as a flat pack. So if I search for Discord, Discord is proprietary software. So it's not going to be in the standard Debian repositories. It's not going to be available through apt install, right? But Discord being proprietary software, you can package it in these third party repositories for snaps, flat packs. So if I click on Discord, we have an install button, but it should tell me somewhere where is it actually getting it from, what repository. Ah, right here, source, FlatHub. So FlatHub is enabled. Okay, so it's ready to go out of the box. It just wasn't in this here. At least I didn't see it. I go to About Software. This is Software 41.5. Of course, that is the GNOME Software Center. And let me close that. Now let me get into the uh, Unity dash here. So if I hit super, it should just bring up our uh, application launcher. And for those of you that are not familiar with the way Unity works, you have your standard uh, applications kind of menu where you can search for something here. You have filter results and you see applications, files and folders. At the bottom here, you have these, you can think of them as tabs in Unity. They called them, I believe they called them scopes, where the, there were, the idea was you had scopes and lenses. I believe the filters were the lenses and these were the scopes, or maybe I got that reversed. But anyway, if I click on this, and of course there's key bindings to change through these as well. You can see this is search applications, and this one here is search files and folders. This one with the movie icon of course would search your videos uh, directory i'm assuming and then this would search your music directory and the photo icon would search your photos directory let's go back to the home here or actually let's go to the applications and what i want to do is i'm going to do installed applications and it just shows you uh, like the last six that you'd probably opened i haven't really opened anything but i'm going to click see 56 more results and this should give us all of the applications and if I make this full screen you see how we have our windows controls here you have the close minimize maximize let's maximize this so you guys can see all the applications installed and it looks like we have for the most part the same packages installed in Ubuntu Unity as standard Ubuntu with some notable exceptions because I do notice they swap out the uh, default PDF viewer, the document viewer, which in GNOME is uh, events, but they are using Atrial, which I believe is one of the Mate tools.
And then I notice Eye of Mate is their image viewer rather than Eye of Gnome, right? So they've swapped out a few tools, you know, of, of the Gnome tools for the uh, corresponding Mate tools. Pluma is our text editor. Let's take a look at Pluma. Pluma is an old fork of gedit, and um, back when you know, uh, it's Mate forked it basically when Mate came about because uh, Mate is a fork of Gnome too, essentially. And let's get back into the uh, full screen dashboard here. One thing I do notice looking at the icons here, we have some icons that are unusually large, right? The, the sizes are not consistent. And I notice one of them is Firefox. Firefox being installed as a snap. I'm assuming the uh, snap packages installed are uh, causing that issue there. And then we hit log out, shut down, reboot the session icons. Uh, they're just probably just unusual icons. They're typically not something you see in application menus, so maybe that's why they're a little weird. Now, one thing I did notice, if I hit the super key to get out of this menu, you know, we have our quick launchers here, which is just the quick launcher to get, you know, back into that, that dash, right? But we have three LibreOffice icons. I mean, who uses LibreOffice that often that, I mean, that's going to be the only quick launchers you have. <laughs> you know, like there's, there's other much more important programs to have here. For example, I'm a little surprised and let's go to the applications menu. We're going to add some stuff. I'm a little surprised. Like everyone needs a browser. Like that's by far the most important application. You should probably have Firefox as a launcher. And honestly, you probably should have your file manager as a launcher. Most people are going to need that eventually uh, just to make things, you know, a little easier to get to. And of course, for me, I, I wouldn't do this out of the box, but for me, just in case I need it later, I'm going to have a quick launcher for the terminal, even though I know Control-Alt-T brings up a terminal in Ubuntu. Some of the applications that are installed, Rhythmbox, of course, is the standard a music player in GNOME, and it's pretty fantastic. I, I'm glad they didn't swap that out for something else. This is Rhythmbox 3.4.4, a uh, really awesome music player. Now, one of the things to get used to, for those of you new to Unity, the we do have a situation where when you're full screen, well, when you're not full screen, your window controls are always on the left side of the window. And this makes sense. I'll explain why here in just a second. But your window controls are always on the left side of the toolbar. When you maximize, you know, your window decorations go away because you really don't need them. But if you want them, if you roll over the title here in the bar, you can get them. So you can un maximize or close or uh, minimize whatever it is you want to do there is a minimize by the way if i minimize it goes down here into the uh, dock here and you can unminimize by clicking on it so why are the window decoration buttons here on the left hand side of the window well that's where they should be one of the things about ui design that most desktop environments get wrong with the exception of unity and with the exception of Mac OS is the window decorations need to be on the left side of the window because you don't want people to have to move the mouse a lot. The worst thing for hand pain and wrist pain, for those of you that sit at a computer all day, and I notice this with my wrist, is having to move that dang mouse. And it doesn't make sense to have, you know, your window decorations on the right hand side of a window. For example, if, let me go down here. If these window decorations were here, you know, so much in your windows happens on the left hand side of the window, right? So like in rhythm box here, even, you know, like we got this left hand pane where you navigate stuff. Typically navigation stuff is on the left hand side of the windows, right? Your back arrows, forward arrows, things like that. If you had a URL bar or something, think about Firefox here. Let's launch the Firefox snap for the first time, which the first time I know it's going to be a little slow. And it wasn't too bad. Let's make that full screen. When you make a browser full screen, right, everything happens on the left hand side, right? You got your arrow buttons and the refresh and your tabs. They start tabbing here on the left hand. Everything's here. Don't put the window controls all the way on over to the right, right? Have them right here. Have everything right here. Where is the launcher to get into the, the dash for Unity? It's right here, right? <laughs> right there. Everything is in this one little corner. There's very little travel. You never want to do anything UI related that forces the, the user with their mouse to have to go to the right hand side of the screen or to the bottom, right? Make everything top 
left or as top left as you can get it. Uh, that just makes sense. Uh, I, maybe it doesn't. I, I know a lot of people do things for aesthetics, but there's more than aesthetics involved here. You really you can actually damage people's hands permanently if you don't design your UIs appropriately. So let's open up the file manager and see if they're using GNOME's Nautilus file manager. They are. I can already tell that's Nautilus plus the name up here, files. Now watch what happens when I hover over files. You get a global menu, right? The menu that is normally, you know, file edit view that's normally in your windows. They use a Mac OS 10 like global menu. This is called a global menu where the menu is integrated into the top bar. I think that makes sense. It saves space because honestly, if you had a bunch of windows open, and had all of them have this extra line with file edit view no you don't need all that just the one that has focus it's file edit view menu goes up into the bar makes a lot of sense most people have their windows full screen any window they're working in they typically have it full screen or they have them uh, in a grid where you know you snap to one side well that didn't quite work in this vm but it should snap if i release it correctly <laughs> you know maybe i have the uh terminal here and let's see if I can snap that so you know you've got the terminal menu here and then if I go over to home into the uh, file manager that's its menu and I think that is the smart way to do this now let me go back into the global menu here for Nautilus and see what version they're using uh, that's not Nautilus that's Nemo uh, so that is Nemo 5.2.4 and the reason I thought that was Nautilus is because Nemo is kind of a fork of an older version of Nautilus. That's why they look so similar. But this is Nemo, so another Mate application, right? So they've swapped out many things for the Mate applications rather than the GNOME applications. And Nemo is one of those choices I think makes sense because honestly, Nautilus isn't a great file manager. Nemo is actually a better choice. As far as some of the other choices they made, like a, the PDF viewer and the image viewer, I mean, one is as good as the other. Pluma versus Gedit, yeah, they're all about the same. But I do appreciate that they swapped out Nautilus for Nemo. I think that's a, a smart decision. Now let me hit super, and I know there is a tweak tool, Unity Tweak. So let me go ahead and open this. And this is kind of like our control panel here. If I made that full screen, and you can't make it full screen, it's, it's got a fixed position. So double clicking on it doesn't do anything. And then let's go into the Unity subsection because I think most people probably will be a little put off by how big the launcher is by default. Now in the older versions of Unity, uh, or the versions that are not part of the Ubuntu Unity Remix distribution we're looking at, this actually used to be much bigger. They used to have a default icon size of 64, and now they're using 48, which I think makes a lot of sense. Honestly, I'd drop that down to about 32, I think. Um, for me personally, auto hide is turned off by default, but if you want to, you can tick that on. Auto hide means when the window is over here, you know, this panel should disappear, uh, but it is not doing that. Maybe we haven't saved this yet because I, the icon size did not change either. Uh, let's see. There's no button to save. Maybe just leaving all of that. Maybe it'll change when I close out. No? So that actually did not do what I thought it was going to do. See, does it remember our choices? Yeah. Icon size 32, but that is definitely bigger than 32. And it's definitely not auto hiding. If it auto hide means when the window gets on the panel, the panel should go away, right? So it doesn't cover up our window we're working in. I wonder if it would remember it if I logged out and logged back in. So let's do a log out. When I log out and log back in, no, it's still the same, same 48 pixel uh, wide bar instead of the 32 pixel wide bar. So I don't know. Maybe this isn't the launcher. Maybe this is the panel. Uh, the panel menu visible? No, because it's talking about menus. They're talking about this here. I don't want to really play with that. I wanted this launcher. Uh, left side launcher, top left driven. We have a transparency level. Let's see if adjusting that does anything. It's hard to tell with this wallpaper. Can't tell if it actually 
does anything or not. Let's change the wallpaper. I'm going to right click, change desktop background. Let's pick a busier wallpaper, something that's got a lot going on. Here, let's just pick this nature photograph because I'll be able to see the grass and all from the transparency when I make this thing fully transparent. Or is that fully opaque? I think that's fully opaque. Let's make it fully transparent. Uh, still nothing going on. I'm, I'm assuming this is a compositing problem. And again, it could be a, a VM problem. could just be the, the driver, the video driver I'm using in the VM. But it doesn't look like... Really, it doesn't look like anything I'm doing in the Unity Tweak Tool is working. So I'm not sure. Let me launch it with the terminal. So let me show you how to debug something or at least get an idea of what was going on if you run something from the terminal you know you'll actually get some error messages hopefully when things are going wrong so changing all of that I've changed a lot of stuff color based on wallpaper yada 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 auto hide I had changed auto hide before and it went back to the default setting restore defaults just goes back to the default settings I don't want to do that yeah, I don't know why this isn't changing. It doesn't look like the uh, tweak tool, at least the launcher, doesn't look like it's doing anything. Uh, let's see, transparency level for the panel, this is the top panel. Yeah, and the transparency is not working for it either, I wouldn't expect it to. Uh, date and time, 12 hour time and 24 hour time. I actually like 24 hour time, which is what it's set to, so that's fine. Include seconds, let's see. Yeah, that changes. So something's working here, but for whatever reason, the launcher here, I don't know why the launcher, yeah, I don't know why n none of this is being respected. Yeah, I'm a little concerned about that because the uh, transparency issue, I can understand that's a video driver issue, but just being able to change uh, the size of the panel and also toggling on auto hide, that has nothing to do with the video driver. That, sh that stuff should just work, so... Maybe there are some other settings managers for this. Uh, let's go into the standard system settings tool, you know, like your GNOME system settings tool. Uh, let's see. And this is the wallpaper, and this is the standard wallpaper pack from Ubuntu. It looks like it does have some extra stuff because I don't think I've seen some of these really colorful uh, jellyfish. Now, those are kind of neat wallpapers, a little bit too busy, a little too colorful for me. Got a little bit too much going on be a little distracting for me. I think I'm just going to go with the default. Nice, simple, clean. Let me go back to all settings. And the other settings are, yeah, just standard stuff here. Nothing Unity related. All the Unity related stuff should have been in the tweak tool, the Unity tweak tool. So, and of course, uh, it's not really working for me. Thunderbird, by the way, is available for an email client. I go back into the, all the installed applications. VLC is our movie player, and again, that's probably another situation where the default GNOME video player just isn't good enough. Right? I, I actually think that's a smart decision. Just get rid of the GNOME video player and swap it out for VLC. I think many users are probably going to install VLC anyway. It makes sense uh, just to go ahead and install it. And then, let me open a terminal again. So I'm going to do Control-Alt-T and zoom in. Is HTOP installed out of the box? No, it's not. It's not installed out of the box on standard. Ubuntu either so and let's go ahead and check system resource usage and we are using one gig of RAM out of the six gigs of RAM I gave this virtual machine and that's pretty normal pretty normal for a GNOME desktop environment pretty normal for Unity although Unity typically is a little lighter I've done a lot of stuff here in the last few minutes though opening a lot of programs so that may be a little higher than what it typically would be like on a cold boot. It's not really using any CPU, but it shouldn't be using any CPU. We're not really doing anything here in this VM at the moment. Some other programs that uh, mainline Ubuntu never installs is Vim installed. Vim is not installed. Is Git installed? <laughs> Git is not installed. I have real issues with mainline Ubuntu not installing Vim, Git, and HTOP. I think those three programs are programs 
most like the overwhelming majority of users probably are eventually going to install those programs just install them out of the box ubuntu i will say with unity it is a nice blast from the past because i did enjoy you know playing with this desktop environment in years past one thing to note the super key of course brings up your, your dash here the super key if you hold it you get the key bindings because there are a lot of key bindings that do various things I, Unity is very keyboard driven if you want it to be. And that's why I liked it, because I never had to touch the mouse. It was almost like a tiling window. Man it's not like a tiling window manager, but you could do a lot simply from the keyboard. You never really had to touch the mouse that much. So you hold the super key, you get you get your key bindings. You also get over here. I don't know if you guys can see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. So it numbers the application. So uh, super one is going to launch the first thing in the panel which of course is firefox super 2 would launch the file manager nemo so if i just do super 2 you know if i didn't know what number it is if i just hold super it'll tell me but usually you can get a pretty good guess from just by looking at it right you know you know super 2 is the file manager super 3 is the terminal and of course if you never move your launchers you will quickly learn exactly what the numbers are anyway because they'll never change unless you rearrange things some other useful key bindings if you do the super key to get into the dash and you do control tab you can tab through the various scopes you know the various tabs at the bottom so that is rather nice too so i'm very happy that Unity as a desktop environment lives on. I'm very happy that this Ubuntu Unity remix lives on because I know a lot of Ubuntu users, millions of Ubuntu users were disappointed when Unity went away. A lot of them were very upset. And uh, hopefully this project alleviates some of those people's anger. <laughs> so uh, one, one thing I will say that uh, this Ubuntu Unity remix, it looks good and it seems Okay, I will say, now I, I look at it in a VM, you never want to judge anything in a VM, but I will say that there were some real slow, sluggish things going on, applications that took forever to load. I don't know what the problem with that was, could be video driver problems. The fact that the Unity tweak tool didn't seem to work, and a lot of the settings that didn't seem to work in that I don't think have anything to do with the video driver that I'm using in this VM. So. I don't know what that is. I don't know if these are known bugs or not. Overall, though, I'm very happy that this project exists, and I will definitely keep taking a look at it in future editions. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show. Devin Gabe, James Maxim, Matt, Michael, Mitchell, Paul, Scott, Wes, Allen, Armor Dragon, Chuck, Commander Ranking, Diokai, Dylan, George Lee, Lennox, Ninja, Mike, Hurry, Jan, Alexander, Peace, Arch, and Vador, Polytech, Reality, Teats for Less, Red Prophet, Steven, and Willie, these guys. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this first look at Ubuntu Unity 2204 would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Now we just need an Arch Unity remix.